Hey superstars, it's your best friend Scott and this is my February recap. It's been a really fun month. I've got VRs for Splendid Sports Cards, Shoebox Legends, Cracker Jack Cards, and Huck Sports Cards, plus a care package from Driller and Squish, a lot of really cool pickups, and some channel updates. So let's do it to it. Adam at Splendid Sports put out a call to see riflemen, outfielders with rocket arms. And I'm going to be difficult and contest that rocket arm catchers are cool too. You know, like Thurman and Johnny and Pudge. But my man asked for outfielders, so he's going to get outfielders. You know, I'm a Cleveland guy, so you're not going to trick me into showing guys like Dave Parker or Bo Jackson, Mickey Mantle, Al Kaline, Willie Mays, or Ichiro. You know, they all had great arms, but I wouldn't have any of their cards. So, um... I use this Trissy card for almost every VR that I do because no matter what question you ask, Triss Speaker is always the answer. He had more assists than any outfielder in history, so you know he could sling it. But I won't show that. Instead, I'll go with Corey Snyder. A lot of people don't remember what a stud he was in the outfield. And I'll also go with hard-hitting Mark Witten. Red Sheendings once compared his arm to Roberto Clemente, if you can believe that. Well, you know, I tend to make stuff up occasionally, but I did actually read that. And one of my all-time favorites, Rocky Colavito. Rocky once threw out a runner at home at Tiger Stadium in Detroit, which doesn't sound all that amazing, but he threw the ball from Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. So there you go, Adam. There's some riflemen for you. Shane at Shoebox Legends is celebrating 500 subs, which I think he should have a ton more because Shane is awesome. But he wants to know... Uh, how we've changed over the years as collectors. So I guess the big ones for me, uh, when I was collecting as a kid, I collected everybody, superstars, Hall of Famers, modern, vintage, whatever. And then when I started collecting again as an adult, I decided to only collect T206 Cleveland Naps cards. After watching some YouTube videos, I decided, okay, okay, I'll collect the 53 Bowman Cleveland Indians team set too. And then after some more YouTube videos, I was like, fine, I'll collect every Cleveland baseball card I can get my hands on. And then it was every Cleveland baseball autograph I can get my hands on. Although I have sharpened my focus on that with specific projects like World Series rosters, uh, Cleveland Hall of Famers and stuff like that. I have been tempted by you guys to do things like set registries, try to go after one of those Mike Payne lists or collect Hall of Famers like all the cool kids, but I feel like I've pretty much found my groove with my Cleveland focus and I'm very happy with that right now. I do find I'm still more interested in vintage and pre-war and lately oddball stuff. Not that that can't or won't change down the line, but that's where I'm at right now. And I guess maybe the point is that if I were collecting in a bubble without the YouTube influences, I might not have gotten past only wanting those T206 cards. And I definitely wouldn't have made all the great friends I've made along the way, like Shane. Aw. He also wants to know about a set that we wish would come back. Uh, I'd like to see Topps Kids come back. I just love these cards. And I think it's a shame that they only made these for one year. I know Big League and Opening Day are supposed to be more uh, kid-friendly releases, but neither of those are nearly as cool as Topps Kids was. So there you go, Shane. Keep being awesome, buddy. Jack at Cracker Jack Cards just hit 300 subs, so congrats, Jack. He wants to see a tabletop showcase. So I'm going to be lazy and show off some oversized stuff because I've got a big table. So here's the original art from my avatar. Here's a cool piece about the 1948 World Series signed by Spawn, Feller, Sane, and Lemon. A Hiroshima Carp magazine from Charlie and Yumi. Maze and Mantle, you just saw those. Uh, Bob Feller exhibit from Decon. Dobie and Tito Francona exhibits. Signed Julio Franco postcard, Sport Magazine with Al Rosen. This postcard isn't old, but it's cool. He notes uh, Ty Cobb in a Cleveland Naps uniform there. These Home Run Champions cards, I had to get the whole sheet because it had Kiner, Doby, and Rosen. Uh, signed Mel Harder postcard, I've got a bunch of Al Rosen signed index cards. A signed Elmer Flick card and a Lou Boudreaux. This was the patch that the Indians wore after Steve Olin and Tim Cruz died in a boating accident in spring training. Some super cool Smokey Bear cards. This is a signed ad with Tom Seaver modeling some clothes for Sears. That's kind of neat. I should probably get that one authenticated though. I've got a soft spot for Ray Fossey, a 1962 Pirates program, a Topps contract with Charles Nagy. I've had this Stan Musial autograph since I was a kid. I know he was faked a lot, but I haven't really looked into its authenticity. Uh, 1949 picture pack early win is a Jack Graney blanket. I believe he's a Hall of Famer as a broadcaster. And uh, Ray Chapman blanket. He's the dude that died after being hit by a pitch in 1920. Here is a press photo with Cy Young being signed to a contract on his 80th birthday by Bill Veck. 
Uh, Earl Averill autograph postcard, Sports Illustrated with Herb Score. That's a very cool cover. Here's uh, some of my signed TTM doodles, Eddie Robinson, Carl Erskine, and Camilo Pasquale. A T201 double folder from uh, Nina S. Cool early wind sign postcard. Isley's Frank Robinson disc from Grand Chuck. My Satchel Page autograph. I forgot to include this Don Mossy postcard in my showcase last week. I bought this Bob Lemon from Baseball Collector. I don't really like this one, though. His smile is goofy. Uh, more Mossy. Lou Boudreau from the Vintage Composer. 1926 MVP George Burns. Bill Wamsgans had an unassisted triple play in the 1920 World Series. Well, hey, everybody. Souvenir ticket from the last Indians home game before they became the Guardians. I have the first Guardians game ticket, too, but I'm not sure where that went. Uh, oversized Satch and Larry. Cy Slapnica was a super scout. He signed uh, Bob Feller, Lou Boudreau, Mel Harder, Herb Score, and Roger Maris. Lots of guys like that. Rocky Calavito on the wrong team. Thunder Thornton thing. Some Redmans. Uh, Jake gave me that Al Rosen. And Dustin gave me this Alvaro. There's a Boudreau. Some guys from the 48 and 54 World Series autograph projects. There's a Boudreau postcard. Joe Sewell I purchased from Baseball Collector again. Uh, Sewell, some famous feats. 1920 World Series hero and Hall of Famer Stanley Kovaleski. And there's another. Jake would want me to cut these out and glue them to the press steels, but I'm not going to. Uh, there's Joe Sewell again. He played uh, 14 years and averaged just 10 strikeouts per year. That is crazy. Another Alvaro from Dustin. Some Alvaro signed Rex Bex from Zane Savage. Al Rosen postcard and photo. Don, Grandpa Phil, Roger, Maz, Mr. Tiger, Koufax, Spawn. And I told you I had a big table. Now I got to put all this stuff away. Anyway, I hope you like it, Jack. Keep up the good work, dude. Huck Sports Cards wants to see who you think the top five players are. And I know I have a Cleveland bias, but I didn't want to just show you the top five Cleveland Indians. So I'm not saying that these are the top five guys in all of baseball history. And fortunately, Huck didn't specifically say baseball, even if that's what he meant. So I picked five guys that could be considered top five. And these might be kind of a stretch, I know, but uh, here's Cy Young. More wins than any other pitcher in baseball history, and that will never be broken. Uh, Napoleon Lajoie, one of baseball's first superstars. He was so good that they named the team after him. And I don't want to go all pre-World War I, so I'll give a spot to Satchel Page. You know, if Joe DiMaggio, Ted Williams, and Bob Feller say he's the greatest pitcher ever, who am I to argue? Um, and here's where I veer away from baseball. NBA's all-time points leader, LeBron James, and not only the greatest running back of all time, but definitely one of the greatest football players of all time, Jim Brown. So there you go, Huck. Hope you enjoyed it. I received a very large care package from my best friends, Driller and Squish. Two buddies ripping packs in Milwaukee, kind of like Laverne and Shirley, but better. Says, uh, here's a little something from Driller and Squish. Just because we like sending racks out. Mmm, racks. Anybody remember racks? It was kind of like Arby's with a salad bar. Anyway, keep being awesome. All our best and keep collecting. You got it, guys. Uh, you keep being awesome, too. Let's see what we got. Good gravy. There's a lot of cards here. Um, Holiday Beebs. Kipnis just retired. He was cool. There's Andres, Dr. Styx, some 86s, he who shall not be named. Santos, and just because I'm speeding through these doesn't mean I'm not excited about them. I'm just trying to keep things moving for you. Uh, Beebs, 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 Shiny Beebs, Fiery Beebs, Neon Beebs, 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 and Green Beebs. Next package here, Jose, Green Jose, 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 Elite Jose, ooh, Quan Rookie, Green Quan Rookie, and I don't know what you call it, Quan Rookie, and uh, Yu Chang, nice. And there's some more awesome sauce, Mini Nailer, Mini Gaylord, cool, Frankie, Julio, I've actually been after this card, now let's see, some uh, Heritage, Class A Gold Cup, Biebs, Jose, Nailer, Dr. Sticks, my man Corey, Corey again, and a Steve Olin rookie. I'll let the 90 Fleer slide this time. We got Sticks, Sticks, Tommy, Tommy, Brantley, Kip, uh, Klubot, Lindor, nice Gabriel Arias rookie, and the 87 style Arias. Very, very cool, guys. Thank you so much. These are all kinds of awesome. I bought way too much stuff this month, so don't tell Mrs. Reindeer. But uh, every month I've been trying to finish off a team set in my 70s binder. So I finished 1972 in February with some high numbers. But I'm not going to show you those because they are literally all commons. So next, I waited until the offseason to nab some Stephen Kwan cards. And it paid off because I paid less. And here's a cool finest rookie. A couple of tops now. 
And I finally picked up a Quan autograph off of one of my Facebook buddies. The gold looks a lot better in person than it does on camera, but I am excited to finally check that one off the list. Here's some stuff inspired by other YouTubers. Uh, Decon inspired me to pick up this cool lenticular Andre Semenis rookie. And 3D 80s Kid and I were talking about Mr. Rogers sweaters the other day, so I picked up some Mr. Rogers cards. Not inspired by anyone, I picked up this Pop Fly Pop Shop print of Albert Bell's Cork Bat incident. And that's the first one of those that I've purchased. I went to one of my favorite antique malls recently and I found these Bob Feller business cards from when he worked for the Hilton. And I've seen these signed because he signed everything, but these were like two bucks each and I thought they were really cool. Um, I did a video last week about this, but here is the last Don Mossy card I needed to complete his Playing Days autographed base card run. And I also found this unsigned 64 and a beautiful PSA 7. I bought these two from B-Roth. We got the Al Luplo rookie and the Doc Edwards rookie. I guess that's Harry Doyle from Major League right there. Just a bit outside. Um, these are high numbers and ridiculously expensive, especially the Euchre rookie, but I never really liked this card all that much, so I decided it was okay to get a beater and spend my money on cards that I really like. And Brian gave me a pretty good deal, so yeah, I was pretty happy to get those into the 62 team set, and that's a big chunk out of my 60s binder, or into my 60s binder, I don't know, you know what I mean. And finally, my favorite pickup this month, a 1949 Exhibit Satchel Page. Uh, this was one of those things where I've been looking at these and this one was up for auction and I put in a bid for about half of what I thought it would go for even with that big crease across his neck and I won so that was pretty cool. Really neat card. Oh yeah, I also picked this up. Um, I'm still blown away by all of your support, so thanks again. I've given my acceptance speech and Alexa voiced her opinion, so I'm not gonna dwell too much on this, but it means a ton that you guys think that much of some weirdo drawing silly pictures to include him in your sports card hall of fame. And speaking of drawing pictures, I haven't done an art video in a while, but we're getting really close. Um, I'm almost done with the latest Grail Quest commission and it is a beast and I'm really excited about it. And I feel like I've been saying that for months now, but I mean it. And uh, finally, I started Three Dumb Questions, mainly so that I could have some quick and easy filler content. And it's been a lot of fun, but it wasn't as quick and easy as I thought it would be. Um, there are quite a few similar shows out there. Plus my mom told me that she didn't really like it, so I've decided to shelve it for a little while. Uh, I got some big ideas to make that show even more fun, but uh, it's gonna take some time. Um, so if you've reached out to me wanting to make an appearance on Three Dumb Questions, it's not you, it's me. So that's it for now. Thanks to Splendid Sports Cards, Shoebox Legends, Cracker Jack Cards, and Huck Sports Cards for cool giveaways. Thanks to Driller and Squish for the super rad care package. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Enjoy your hobby and make it your own. <clears throat> Here we go, walking down the street. Get the funniest looks from everyone we meet.